Number 15. Suppose figure 25.54 represents a ray of light going from air through crown glass into water, such as going into a fish tank. Calculate the amount the ray is displaced by the glass, delta x, given the incident angle is 40 degrees and the glass is one centimeter thick. All right. So incident angle, it always means the angle of attack, let's just say, of a particular light ray. And that angle is always in reference, look at the picture at the top, always in reference to the uh, angle relative to the y-axis there, so uh, theta 1, all right? So remember, all the all of these angles here are going to be in reference to the y-axis, basically, or the normal uh, to the plane of the material, all right, or whatever we're talking about, air, glass, you know, uh, the, the articulation layer, so to speak. Anyway, let's get on with it. So, um, it tells us that theta 1 is going to be equal to 40 degrees, all right? And now what we are trying to do is trying to find this displacement here uh, between the two light rays. And basically, you know, the displacement here between these two uh, is going to be the same as the displacement here because these angles then will be constant and these lines are then parallel to one another. So, you know, I can just find this particular displacement here. That will be just as good. I'm just going to label that X. All right. So what we might realize is uh, maybe we should create like a little picture. All right, so why don't I create this two triangles? All right, I'll create this little triangle here in blue. All right. And inside of that angle, I'll use the theta two, okay? Inside of this angle right here is going to be, you know, theta two, let's just say. All right, this is theta two. And let's say I'm gonna create a bigger triangle now. All right, so let's maybe do that in black. Create a bigger triangle with this being the hypotenuse now. I'm going to try to go under that so you still see the colors. There we go. All right. And now this whole angle in there will be, uh, I don't know, call it theta 1, right? Call it theta 1. The reason being is because it technically is theta 1, all right? Uh, because this line is going to be, this is a straight line, theta, this line going down, right? It intersects. We have, what are these, vertical angles? I don't remember the terminology, right? Do you remember back from like ninth grade? I don't. Um, so anyway, it's theta 1. So what we need to do basically is I, I'm kind of realizing down here, if I can find that total length, all right, and then I can find this little length in here, maybe I can subtract the two, right, and find my x. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to find that length in, in black, and I'm going to find this length, and then I'm going to subtract the two. All right, so let's do it. So first thing is I got to figure out some of these angles. All right, we, I already know theta 1 is going to be 40, but how about theta 2? What is that going to be? Well, we can use Snell's law. It says that the uh, index of refraction of the first medium multiplied by the sine of the uh, incident angle, all right, is equal to then the index of refraction of the second medium multiplied by then the sine of the refracted angle. Remember, all of these angles are in re uh, relation to the y-axis. So basically, if I want to solve this for uh, theta 2, right, just divide out the n2, all right, and then you got to take the inverse sine of both sides to get rid of the sine, right? That should be pretty cool, sine minus 1. That would cancel the sine there, and now we just have a function for theta 2. So plug in your stuff. And 1, it's going to be air, okay? It's going from air. So you can use 1. I'm going to use this number. It's pretty much going to be the same. Multiply them by the sine of, uh, what in the world do we have? The sine of uh, 40, okay? I forgot for a second where I am. Uh, N2 is going to be then 1.52. That is then the, remember, and this is the area of refraction. That's going to be the crown glass, Okay. That's equal to theta 2. Make sure your sign, uh, make sure your calculator is in uh, degree mode. Otherwise, you're going to be getting radian values. 293. And multiply them by sine of 40. And then divide that all by now 1.52. All right, so this is about 25, right? So I get about 25.02 degrees. And that's going to be equal to theta 2. All right. So now that I know my theta 2, all I need to do is now look at the blue triangle up here at the top, right? I'll write it over here on the left. 
So if we now know that angle up there is going to be 25.02 degrees, and I am trying to now find, let's say, this particular distance down there, and I also know, oh, they gave us the thickness, right, of the glass, so you know this height here, so that's going to be 0 0.01, I can just use some basic trigonometry, right? I can basically use the tan function. So the tan of that angle, 25.02, is going to be equal to the opposite side, x, over then the adjacent, 0 0.01. All you're going to do is then cross multiply, right? All you're going to do is cross multiply, so let's move this stuff on over. Look at that, boom, 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 and that's equal to x. And then what we'll do is we'll erase it, and now all we need to do is just multiply. So take the tangent now of that value, and then multiply it by 0 0.01. So here you go. So this is going to be 0 0.00467 or so is going to be equal to that x. Okay, great. Keep it on the keep it on the side. Now guess what we're going to do again? We're going to do the same thing now for the red one. Oh, excuse me, the black one that I created, right? So the black triangle now looks like this in the picture. We know that angle was 40 degrees because of, you know, whatever we learned way back in the day in high school. And uh, I also know the height here again is going to be 0 0.01, so i got to find my x. So it's literally the same calculation. So it's going to be tangent of a 40 multiplied by 0 0.01 is going to be equal to that x value now. So take the tangent of 40, tan of 40, multiply by 0 0.01. So there you go. So now you got 0 0.00839. That's equal to x. And now all you have to do, as we mentioned prior, is now subtract the two values here, right? So uh, when I take the black x, 0 0.00839, and I subtract out now the blue one, 0 0.00467, it's going to then equal my red x, right? Just like in the picture, just take a look at that picture, let it sink in, all right? So we'll take that value and then subtract it by that. I'm using all exact values. So here we have now x is going to be equal to 0. Point, I guess you want scientific, doesn't matter, right? 3.72, I guess, 3.72 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, minus 3. And that's in terms of meters. You need it in millimeters or whatever, you know what to do. So that's that, all right? That's how, that's the displacement, basically, all right? Obviously, you can see what do you think happens as the height here would increase, Right? As the thickness of the glass essentially increases, what do you think will happen to the x? Well, think about it. Do a calculation. Let me know. All right? What do you think? Guys, I hope this helps. It's going to increase. Um, and I will see you in the next video. All right? Have a great one.